Hello, my name is Dean Kelly. I own Eastern Shore Antiques in Daphne, Alabama. I uh, welcome this opportunity to talk to E-Country Lifestyle about the arts of the Meiji period of Japan. And just by way of background, I, uh, I worked in accounting and finance my whole life and spent most of the time in the maritime industry. But I traveled a, a fair amount in the mid-1990s and 1996 and went to Japan and China several times. And I developed an interest in oriental arts at that time. And, and as well as just a general interest in antiques. And so um, about three years ago, I started working with antiques full time. And then in the last five months, opened up this shop in, in Daphne where we have 6,000 square feet and I have an array of antiques, but we also have a large collection of uh, Oriental. In fact, we've been told that we have the largest selection of Oriental arts on the uh, Gulf Coast in between Destin and Houston. So, but I, I wanted to talk to you about the Meiji period today, and that period was from 1868 to 1912. And just by way of background, the, um, that period was preceded by the Edo period, which uh, was 1603 to 1868. But during that period, the Edo period, Japan was, um, it was, you could say, kind of a wilderness. I mean, it was in the days of the uh, samurai. You know, I mean, everybody's seen the movies about the samurai on TV and the, um, the samurai carrying swords around. And, um, during the, um, the Edo period, the Japanese leadership had a real isolationist policy. I mean, they, they viewed the rest of the world as a threat. And in fact, the only countries that they had any type of dealings with during that period of time were China and the Netherlands. That was it. In fact, it was forbidden to uh, travel outside of Japan during the Edo period. As I said, this was in the days of the samurai. And Japan was actually ruled by the shogun and the emperor, and they had local leaders called daimyos during that period of time as well. Um, in 1853, Commodore Perry from the U.S. took a large fleet of ships over to Japan to try to start some relations up with the Japanese. And it was, it was kind of rocky, certainly, to begin with, but um, they used tact and firmness, and developed a treaty in the next year in 1854 that allowed trade to start with the Japanese. And during that period of time, the, um, the U.S. contingency was only allowed to be in one place in Japan, but at least trade could start. And then in the next few years after that, Japan also entered into treaties with Great Britain and France and with Russia as well. Um, in the 1860s, there was a leadership change in Japan and in 1868 was actually the start of the Meiji period and that's the period of time I want to talk about which is 1868 to 1912. Japan had a strong interest in the arts throughout this period in, in the Edo period leading up to the Meiji period but they actually developed the attitude at that point that they wanted to show the rest of the world what they were capable of from an art standpoint. So I kind of wanted to walk through some of the categories of the strengths that the Japanese had and some of the fantastic arts that they produced during that period of time. So uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to talk about different categories. I wanted to start with talking about metalwork. The, um, given the fact that there were the samurais and they each, each one carried two swords, well, these things were just fantastic um, pieces of metalwork and very ornate and so the craftsmen that worked on those were very skilled and also during this period of time which of course was the Edo period leading into the Meiji period they had a lot of very nice decorative arts in their temples um, different types of metal work well as we move into the Meiji period of course the samurais kind of went by the wayside um, as well as the the interests and the temples and the shrines waned a little bit so you had all these skilled craftsmen that did metal work that that just didn't have anything to do and they they shifted over to focusing on things to export to the rest of the world and export to the US and uh, they started producing just some fantastic crafts and um, just a few items I wanted to show today. This lantern 
is made of bronze. And th this came from the Meiji period, probably the 1890s, somewhere in that time frame. And just the metal work on it is incredible. The, uh, a lot of the work that the Japanese did during this period of time were of birds and floral types of decoration. And you can see on here that just the detail of the metal work and the floral um, flowers that are on here all the way down to the base. Really uh, just a wonderful job, so detailed and um, just a fantastic example of the kind of work they did.